There's a comment I've gotten many times on this channel, and I thought I'd make a video about it, because it, although I would answer this comment uh, several times quickly, it's pointing at something a little bit deeper that maybe a bunch of you, maybe you yourself, have had, had, had questions about. And that is, uh, several people have said that I should be t titling my channel Doug's Dhamma, D-H-A-M-M-A, -M -M -A, rather than Doug's Dharma. That the quote-unquote real word is Dhamma rather than Dharma. And this opens up a whole, I think, uh, topic for discussion. Because early Buddhism, the, the, the Buddhism that came from the earliest stratum, the earliest texts, occurs in two different languages. It occurs in the language of Pali and in the language of Sanskrit. Now, Pali, we'll begin with that. Pali is the, the language in which uh, the broadest number of uh, early texts are written, at least in, as regards the texts that are written in an Indic language, that is a language that stems from India. Now, some scholars have proposed that Pali was actually the language that the Buddha taught in. This is particularly something that Richard Gombrich has suggested in a recent book of his. However, most scholars don't accept that. They don't believe that Pali was actually the language that the Buddha spoke. However, it certainly would have been relatively close to the language that the Buddha spoke. It's a, perhaps a literary language that, that came up after his lifetime, but it would have been relatively close to that language. Sanskrit, however, is an older language that went back uh, at least to the Vedas, if not before, uh, Vedic Sanskrit. Now, the Vedas are a set of religious texts that stem from a period maybe a thousand years or more before the Buddha's lifetime. It's also the language of the Upanishads. It's the language of much of what became Hinduism, and indeed Hinduism is uh, the, many of the religious texts of Hinduism are written in Sanskrit. I would say all of them are. It's also the language in which much later Buddhism was written in. I shouldn't say much later, but slightly later, uh, particularly the sutras of the Mahayana, which were written uh, perhaps four or five hundred years and more after the Buddha's lifetime. They were largely written in Sanskrit. And then were translated from Sanskrit into other languages, such as Tibet and, Tibetan and uh, Chinese. Now, it's important to note here that Pali and Sanskrit, these two languages I've been discussing, are actually very closely related. They can be understood as dialects of one another. So, for example, in uh, Pali we'll have a word like Dhamma, and in Sanskrit we have Dharma. We will have, uh, Pali will have Sutta and Sanskrit Sutra. Pali will have kar uh, Kama and Sanskrit Karma. Or uh, Nibbana in Pali and Nirvana in Sanskrit. Or Bhikkhu in Pali and Bhikshu in Sanskrit. Or Dukkha in Pali and Dukkha in Sanskrit. So we can see these words, uh, of course, uh, you know, you could go on uh, for hours. These words are very, very close. There are other words that are a little bit farther apart than these, but we're getting the point that this is, these are basically differences of pronunciation and little else. Now, there's more, to, again, there's more to it than that. The languages are a little bit different, but probably mutually intelligible to a degree. And now it might have occurred to you to ask, to wonder, given that these languages are so similar, it's just basically a difference in, a slight difference in pronunciation of some of these terms, what does it matter? whether we use one language or the other. And uh, to many of us, it may not matter. However, it's important to keep in mind that for many people, there are, I would say, subtle sectarian implications in which of these languages we use. Because, for example, in Theravada Buddhism, which is the Buddhism that's uh, practiced in Southeast Asia, it's the sort of the origin of, of things such as uh, mindfulness meditation, of, of uh, insight meditation, and so on in the West. In that form of Buddhism, uh, pa the Pali Canon is, is the uh, sacred text, or the, the most important sacred text. And that, of course, those are texts in Pali. So they tend to view Buddhism in Pali terms and prefer 
that we use particular Pali terms when we're discussing Buddhist concepts. On the other hand, in Mahayana Buddhism, as we've said, uh, those texts will look back to the Sanskrit as being important to them. Uh, they'll often, in fact, there's, there are no living schools nowadays that only use Sanskrit in, in Buddhism. So you will find living schools in China, Japan, Korea, Tibet, and other places. And they will look to, uh, obviously, their, the text that they'll be reading most of, mostly will be written in the language of the place that they are. So they'll be written in Tibetan or Chinese. But again, when it comes to understanding the fine points, they'll look to the older language out of which many of these texts were understood to be translated, or if these texts are commentaries, then the, what the commentary is, is, is discussing, they'll look to the Sanskrit term. And so if you're coming at Buddhism from a Mahayana standpoint, you're going to be looking at terms in Sanskrit rather than those in Pali. And there is, to this day, a relatively uneasy relationship between Theravada and Mahayana Buddhism. In the main, it's perfectly good, and there are a lot of very friendly and non-problematic uh, encounters between uh, people of these two different religions. Of course, the Mahayana religion is very, very diverse. It includes many different types of Buddhism uh, from many different countries, whereas Theravada is somewhat less diverse. But in any event, because of this kind of uneasy relationship, while on the, in the main it's good, there are times when there can be sectarian issues, and that's where it comes down. That's when this question about which precise term we're using makes a difference. So to that end, as I say, some people have complained that I should be calling my channel Doug's Dhamma rather than Doug's Dharma. Uh, partly that's perhaps because I'm interested in early Buddhism, so Therefore, I have more interest, let's say, in the Pali than I would in, in Sanskrit. This is true. Uh, but I think partly it's also because the people bringing this up are perhaps more interested in Theravada Buddhism. Now, for the record, I don't see myself as, a particular, as particularly belonging to any present school of Buddhism that's in existence. Uh, what interests me most is early Buddhism, which isn't really a school now. It's, it's actually something that... That, is, that we understand through scholarship, and I've done videos about this in the past. I'll put links to uh, them down below, or one of them down below. Oh, and I'm interested in secular Buddhism, which is a contemporary kind of Buddhist uh, understanding. Uh, but, ni but neither of these is really a school in any sense. It's just sort of a way that I approach the teachings. And I think there is a, a bigger problem here, which is the problem of sectarianism in general. That is to say, of course, each of us has our own preferences. That, that goes without saying. We have certain things, certain practices that we prefer, certain ways of understanding the Dharma that we prefer. That's absolutely normal. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we're going to uh, identify ourselves with, with that understanding that we prefer and hold it over other people, then that's beginning to use the Dharma as a tool of creating arguments, of creating disputes, of creating enmity between people, of creating anger and hatred. And that is not using the Dharma properly, in my view. Or at least we should try, we should strive as much as possible to minimize that. Of course, there are always going to be cases where we say somebody's gotten something wrong and so we try to correct them, but in the final analysis, we should be careful about using terms that, uh, or specifically using terms that create problems or difficulties or anger with people. Now, all that said, it's absolutely true that when I created this channel, I thought about calling it Doug's Dhamma because, hey, I am interested in Pali. I'm interested in early Buddhism. However, I decided against that for the simple reason that dharma is actually a word now in the English language. You can actually look it up in virtually any dictionary of English and you'll find the word dharma there. So it's become a part of our language. We understand it as another English word, if you like. And as a result, if I use it in the title, it's not going to confuse people. However, if I use a term like dhamma, 
which is not well understood, it's going to cause question and confusion. And I think, you know, rule number one for coming up with a title, particularly a title of a channel, is not to confuse people because confusion tends to turn people off. And what I want to do is to present this material in a way that is most easy to understand. And it, again, if people have questions, then we go further, we go deeper, we go into that rabbit hole, which is what I've been doing today. So if you're interested more in this rabbit hole of, let's say, what the Pali language is, which most people are not familiar with, I did an earlier video on uh, basically whether we need Pali anymore. And I'll leave a link to that uh, video up here on the screen if you're interested. If you're getting something out of these videos of mine, consider taking a look over at my Patreon page. It's, it's linked down below and see if you want to help uh, support the channel. Thanks so much and we'll catch you on the next video. And meanwhile, all of you be well.